There have been several requests that I show how to set up a flat tool on a planer. A flat tool is a broad end cutting tool that enables a planer to rapidly finish cast iron by engaging its broad cutting edge. It is a finishing tool. If machining a wide surface, large traversing feeds of between a quarter and a half an inch or more can be used to reduce cutting times and provide a good surface finish. If machining surfaces that are narrower than the cutting edge, the tool can be plunged, as shown here, planing this lathe bed. After each stroke, the tool is plunged a little deeper, until finally a spring cut is taken. With this final stroke, the tool is not advanced, and it cuts very lightly, so that there is little tool pressure. During the cut, the work and the tool are allowed to spring back to their near at rest state to produce a straight surface. When setting up a flat tool, care must be taken to ensure that the cutting edge is parallel or nearly so to the rail, which should itself be parallel to the table. If it is not exactly parallel, its trailing edge must be slightly higher than the leading, otherwise the entire edge will be engaged in the cut with each traverse feeding rather than just the newly fed portion. An easy way to set the tool parallel to the table is to place the tool shank in the clapper but leave the clamping straps slightly loosened, resting the cutting edge on a soft ground steel block that is against the table surface. Soft so that it will not dull the keen cutting edge. Here the tool holder is resting in the planer clapper with the clamp nuts loosened, the upper ones just fairly slightly, so that the tool stands nearly as it would when clamped in place. By lightly grabbing the tip of the shank it is rocked side to side a few times to let it find its resting place on the block. Then the upper two nuts are tightened by hand, followed by the lower two. Then the tool is raised off the block and the nuts tightened with a wrench. The tool should now be very close to parallel and in many cases can be used like that. If more accuracy is required, use a tenths indicator against the edge and traverse the head side to side tapping the tool until it becomes parallel. Of note is that if the tool is to be plunged, it may be necessary to ensure that the tool slide was perpendicular to the table before setting the flat tool. This so that when angling the head, the flat tool will be exactly perpendicular to the slide. For angling the head more accurately than obtained using the angle graduations marked on the head, a dial indicator can be used against a surface that is perpendicular to the surface that is being cut. In the case shown, the side perpendicular to the desired surface of a V-block is used to set the head to precisely 45 degrees. Of note is that wide flat tool cuts could have significant tool pressure against the work. This may need to be accounted for. For example, when planing this long lathe bed, the center was not clamped against its center pad. Because it was only clamped at its ends, the bed deflected, rolling away from the tool at the center by five tenths. Clamping center down on its pad is necessary to prevent this. The bed needed to have another cut taken after the central clamp was installed. If the lathe does not have a central pad, then it is short enough to make this unnecessary if the final cut is a spring cut. Flat tools are usually made from tungsten carbide, this so that their edge remains sharp. During the first moments of use, a sharpened edge deteriorates. Carbide will do less of this. It will also stay sharp for a longer time, for some large surface cases, long enough to finish the job. Most tungsten carbide tools, when used with a planer, should have their edges honed so that they are not dead sharp. This is to strengthen the edge to protect it against the impact of each stroke. However, flat tools should be kept keenly sharp. Since the depth of cut is so slight, shattering the carbide is not a concern, and a keen edge will more likely slice through the grains rather than dislodging them. However, a carbide tool must be lifted to clear the work during the return stroke or it will shatter. Tungsten carbide is made for compression and has poor tensile strength especially during the shock of a tool bouncing over the chips during return. The edge angles affect the outcome. To a point, the greater the rake, and to a lesser extent, the clearance, the better the finish. The 
tool should have a positive rake of 0 to about 7 degrees from the vertical. This one is 7. Clearance should be between 3 and 5 from the horizontal. If the machine or setup is less than great, reducing the clearance may help with chatter. A small clearance will require more frequent sharpening due to the resultant more rapid growth of the wear land. Also, the cutting edge should have no cant. Its edge should be parallel to the front face of the rail. Because the flat tool has such a broad edge against the work surface, the tool must not flex deeper into the cut as cutting pressure increases. This is what chatter is about, a cyclical digging in. With such a broad edge as a flat tool, the consequence could be severe. A very small increase in tool pressure will dig the tool very slightly, but because of the wide edge, it has become a very large increase in cutting pressure and thus an even deeper cut leading to extreme chatter. Placing the cutting edge behind the base of the tool will mean that any flexing of the tool holder will decrease the depth of the cut and so be self-correcting. This kind of holder is often called goosenecked because the holder curves backwards. However, this can cause a problem if the edge is set exactly parallel to the table. When the leading edge of the tool gets to the far edge of the part, to complete the surface, its edge may not be fully engaged. Part of the edge now overhangs the surface. In such a case, the tool pressure will be less than for the previous cut, and thus the cut very slightly deeper due to the spring in the holder. If the trailing edge of the tool is a little higher than the leading, then this is of little consequence. But if exactly parallel, the trailing edge will cut a little deeper into the surface than the rest of the cut. For this reason, if the edge is exactly parallel, either the cut should be gauged so that the final stroke is about a full feed width, or, alternately, the cut should be cut very lightly, possibly a spring cut. I made this holder 45 years ago just knowing that the edge must be behind the shank. The offset is extreme, but has remained my favorite tool. Here is another I made, this one with the edge even with the shank. It seems to work well too. Of note is that it is the entire tool support system that matters in the deflection. If the tool extends far forward, flexing and twisting of the rail could force the tool deeper. Therefore, it may be best to have the edge well behind the shank, both so that the tool holder will flex away from the work and also to reduce the amount the edge extends in front of the rail and perhaps the shank should be less robust than this one, so that it will flex more during the cut. I think that my original holder is a bit too stout.